This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, January the 22nd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and wow, is, do we have our plate full for today and tonight. Let's start off with the problem of the morning, and that is fog. You can see it very clearly on the Jasper Skycam, and it's very clear on the Clanton Skycam. So it's just foggy across the area. Fog expected to burn off uh, by the middle of the morning, and also if as the warm front begins to move northward, we should see a fairly... Uh, good end to the fog. But in the meantime, then the Storm Prediction Center has outlooked a moderate risk. And since James posted earlier, they've shrunk the moderate risk just a little bit. It now is not including uh, any part of Alabama, but it is so close that, you know, uh, we're splitting hairs on that. Moderate risk primarily across the northern half of Mississippi, uh, parts of West Tennessee and eastern Arkansas, and then that area surrounded by a slight risk. So here's the setup this morning. Uh, we do have a warm front just to the south, that warm front, uh, and this is um, at, uh, let's see, 18Z uh, or uh, noon at uh, by uh, 06Z, midnight. The surface low has developed, and we now are in the warm sector, as you can see, with the warm front lifting uh, northward. I think the warm front will probably be a little further north than this actually shows, and we'll be into the warm sector. And then by uh, 12Z on Monday morning, the cold front should be pretty well through much of central Alabama with still a little bit of a threat uh, during the uh, first few hours of daylight across the eastern part of the state. In the upper atmosphere, of course, we're dealing with that shortwave trough you can see just to the east of the Four Corners area over uh, New Mexico and Colorado. Now let's take a look at uh, some forecasts and here is the forecast for uh, 500 millibars at uh, midnight tonight. And uh, you see that the trough is going negatively tilted. So that that helps to enhance uh, all of the parameters down around the southern end and uh, southeastern side of that particular uh, trough. In the meantime, we also have in the uh, and higher up at uh, 200 millibars, we have a screaming jet coming in there that's around 125, 130 knots. And that is, you know, poised to come into the uh, northern Mississippi area, and this again is at midnight tonight. And then below that, and we'll zoom in here on Alabama, you can see a low-level jet on the order of about 30 knots, perhaps maybe even 35 knots. Now, what about uh, instability? And that's been one of the things that we've had a problem with, and uh, the uh, RPM is suggesting that uh, the, R uh, this, the CAPE values will be on the order of around 1,000. Now, the the latest S, uh, SREF forecast suggests that it may be a little lower than that. So once again, we're somewhat limited on inst on instability. This is at 03Z. That would be, uh, uh, let's see, what is that? That is uh, 9 p.m. tonight. And then we go to uh, midnight, and you can see the values uh, getting up. Uh, uh, probably now getting up, especially in Mississippi, uh, approaching 1,500. And then when we get into, when it moves into Alabama, the values drop off somewhat. Uh, we're still around 1,000, and uh, that is at 9Z or 3 a.m. And then by uh, 12Z, uh, again, the value is still staying around 1,000. And then by 15Z, which is uh, 10 a.m., things uh, are very much calming down. Now, looking at the RPM and seeing where we stand, one of the things we've got to worry about, too, is discrete cells out ahead of this situation, out ahead of the line. Been focusing more on the line, but the mesoscale factors will control and determine exactly where discrete cells occur. So we're going to have to watch those discrete cells, especially any of those discrete cells that form south of the warm front and move across the warm front. Uh, because that will uh, add uh, additional uh, dynamics to the whole process and potentially cause those thunderstorms to go severe. This is uh, at uh, midnight tonight, and you can see the squall line coming across the Mississippi River, essentially. Then we see the by 3 a.m., the uh, squall line entering Alabama, and it does look like perhaps uh, the squall line may have uh, some embedded supercells in it. And then by... Uh, 12Z or 6 a.m., you can see the squall line has passed uh, essentially in the vicinity of uh, Clanton and uh, Anniston. Now, very quickly, we can also look at the European. The European a little bit slower. This is the European. Uh, it shows 
the 12Z um, surface position, surface front position, to be actually just getting into Alabama. So the European just a little bit slower. Uh, and if we look at the GFS at the same time, the GFS just a little faster. It's got the frontal position already into the state at 12Z. Now, a couple other things from uh, the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, here is the uh, helicity values. This is, uh, uh, you know, the, the rotating of the wind and the um, uh, you can see that the value is very high uh, across uh, Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi. Uh, and then, and this is at uh, midnight, we go to about uh, 12Z, and you can see the values beginning to taper off as the, the, the bulk of the high values have moved off into Georgia, so the threat decreasing. Now, right now, uh, one of the things is, of course, we have a lot of moisture. You can see that the dew points across the area are in the 60s across South Alabama and southern Mississippi and into Louisiana. So certainly lots of moisture there, and that means a lot of rain. The QPF for the next five days uh, could be as much as six inches uh, along the central Mississippi River Valley area. Uh, and for day one to two, which is the event we're looking at for tonight, it looks like on the order of about one inch across much of the northern half of the state of Alabama. All right, now we've kind of discussed what's happening tonight. So um, discrete cells possibility late in the afternoon and into the evening hours. The, the squall line comes in probably after midnight, uh, more towards maybe the 3 a.m. hour, and then traverses the state and gets out of here. So now let's go out to the regular forecasting. This is uh, Monday at 18Z, and there goes that, that uh, trough up uh, through the uh, eastern Ohio River Valley. And of course, we're clearing out. In the meantime, on Tuesday, we do have kind of a, a little breathing day uh, where the weather should be fairly calm. And uh, there comes another uh, shortwave trough coming through the southern Rockies in northern Mexico. And of course, uh, we've got the front lingering across the Gulf Coast. So we'll have to be watching the return of that. That trough uh, uh, moseys across northern Mexico on Wednesday, and of course that sets the stage for more moisture return and another perhaps uh, start the day off Wednesday with some um, dry weather and then we move into some wet weather. It moves across into eastern Texas on Thursday, and of course that would be a relatively uh, wet day for much of the southeastern U.S. with the main threat for any kind of severe weather action in the Gulf or at least along the Gulf Coast. And right now that doesn't look particularly um, you know, significant in the way of uh, severe weather, but we'll be watching that. The trough comes across uh, the Alabama-Mississippi line on Friday, and so uh, we see a time that we should be clearing out and uh, the rain should be ending. So once again, we get a little a break in the rain on uh, by the afternoon on Friday. And then uh, by Saturday, we should have a good day and we see a colder look uh, as we uh, head here to the 28th. And we see a bit of a colder look. You can see the thickness values dipping down into Oklahoma, the 540 line, uh, approaching uh, Dyersburg in western Tennessee. So certainly a bit of a colder look to it. And then uh, that the much of the colder air shunts off. Now we're going to cool down, definitely, but uh, uh, we're not going to get extremely cold. And you can see that on by sa uh, Sunday, a week from today, the 540 line running around the Alabama. Uh, Tennessee line. So uh, again, much of the colder air moved off to the east, but we certainly cool down and, and are not going to be quite as mild. And then finally, let's just go out a little further. And uh, as the GFS suggested yesterday, the uh, 3rd of February is what this map is for at midday. And that uh, trough over the Mississippi River Valley certainly suggests a colder look to our uh, weather. Uh, but all the precipitation is out by this time, so not any uh, doesn't look like any kind of winter storm event, as, especially for the southeastern U.S., at least for now. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. Please stay tuned to the blog for additional posts today and tonight as we watch the developing uh, situation. In the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.